seller financing. You know, a lot of people are talking about it and giving you guys all this theory, but what people don't often talk about is what makes the sellers tick. What do those sellers really want? As buyers, I get why we want seller financing, but today in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to present your seller financed offers in a way that's going to make the seller want to bite. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%, that's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. This is Holton Wise TV. I'm your host, James Wise. We work together one on one in this show, right? And who I'm working with one on one today is my man, Jay. Jay. Uh, we've worked together in the past and then recently you decided, you're like, Hey man, let's do a round of videos on, uh, seller financing opportunities. Like, can you find me some seller financing deals? Absolutely. I just got done filming uh, a video for you previously with a seller finance duplex. This is another seller finance duplex actually owned by the same, uh, particular seller. And a lot of the numbers are going to be very similar in this one to the last one. And we're going to utilize, uh, basically the same strategy, right? It's right next door, 3315 West 127th, Cleveland 44111. Same time on the market as the last one, 63 days. But the price, <laughs> the last one was overpriced at 110, okay? That was worth 90. They priced it at 110. This one, also worth 90, <laughs> and they priced this one at 130, right? Uh, this is a very nice property, a very nice duplex, but it's not worth 130,000. But... That's why seller financing is on the table, and I'm going to show you how to utilize that. Get in the seller's head and negotiate a great deal for yourself, right? It's a nice property, though, right? Fully occupied duplex. There's a shot of the gas meters. Nice upgraded uh, bathroom. One of the bedrooms. Upgraded electrical panels. Two newer furnaces. Hot water tanks. I think this one's only a couple years old. This one appears to be a little bit older. All right, but uh, no big deal there, right? How water tanks, they're a cheap fix, right? They cost a 1000 bucks to replace. You got to do so every 15 years. I bet you got at least 10 years of life left in this one. Probably like a handful in that other one there. But all in all, it's a nice nice property, right? Solid deal. It just, you know, it ain't worth $130,000, okay? We got two tenants in there. They're paying six hundred and seven fifty, so it brings in thirteen fifty a month, 16200 a year using normal metrics. Of that 16200 I anticipate you'll spend 9300 running this thing, leaving you with an NOI of 6900 right? So let's talk about price. 90 I think it's worth 90 man. I think this is worth 90 right? Here's the thing with seller financing, guys. I get it. As a buyer, we love seller financing. Seller financing is great as a buyer. I buy a couple million dollars worth of seller finance real estate every single year, dude. It's great. If you can get sellers to do the deal with you and you come down with a down payment, you're not stuck with always that 25% down. Sometimes you might have to put down more. Sometimes it's less. It's all open, right? There are no rules with seller financing. It's what you can negotiate with the seller, right? So that's where your sales skills are going to come into play. That's where your ability to create win-win deals are going to come into play, right? With uh, traditional financing, right? Great stuff. I love it. I do not think you shouldn't use it. But look, here's the deal. No matter who you are, what you're talking about, the bank, they got set criteria of your credit, set criteria of debt to income ratio, set criteria of the numbers uh, of the price ranges of properties they'll lend, set criteria and down payments they want, right? They're always going to want on non-owner on non -owner occupied properties. They're always going to want 25% down. They'll give you the other 75%. That's great terms. Don't get me wrong. But like, you don't have any, any swing or any play. You can't be like, hey, Mr. Loan Officer, I tell you what. Let's do a deal, but let's do it like this. Like, it don't matter, dude. It don't matter who you are. Like, that's just not how it works, right? They're selling these properties to Fannie and Freddie on the secondary market. Like, your loan officer doesn't have the power to change anything. Like, it, you can't change anything. But with seller financing, you're in the driver's seat. If you could sell uh, your the benefits of doing a deal with you a certain way, the way you want them to do a deal with you, 
uh, you can do that, right? It's, it's all open, right? So to do that, you got to try to create win-wins. What this guy's doing, this guy's trying to get 40000 extra dollars out of his property. Plus, he probably wants interest on the back end, right? So what this guy is looking to do is... He bought a property, he knows the property is probably worth X, and he's willing to offer owner financing because he wants to get Y price, and he knows Y price ain't going to happen under a normal sale, right? You'd have to be crazy to buy this for 130000 Not that it's a bad property, not that it's not nice, not that it's not bringing in good rent. It's just I could find freaking 30 of these properties equally as nice uh, for like 90K, right? Maybe 100, 90, 100K, right? So like wouldn't make no damn sense to buy this dude's at at 130, right? If, uh, you know, there's a McDonald's, 20 McDonald's is on the same street and they're all selling a burger for a dollar, you ain't going to go to the 21st one that's selling the same burger for $2. This just don't make any sense, right? So this guy had to offer owner financing, right? He's trying to create a win-win probably. He gets more money and then you get somebody to finance you. So what I want you to do with that in mind and still get what you want, which is the deal, but also not paying overpriced, uh, an overpriced price for the deal, I want you to offer this guy 90, which is what I believe the property is worth. We're going to offer him 90. I want you to put down 10, $10,000. I want to get him to finance the other $80,000, right? Very similar to the other deal, right? Same pretty much numbers because we're dealing with basically the same property. Uh, you know, the metrics on this one and the other one he's selling, they're like the same. He's just adding an extra 20K because, I don't know, he thinks he should get it. I don't I don't know why he's doing that. But this is how we're going to do We're going to create a win-win. Go to HoltonWise.com. I'm going to show you guys how to do this, right? Step-by-step -step process. HoltonWise.com. This is all free. Tools and resources, right? You go over to your mortgage calculator here, okay? Now, I want you to put down 10. I want you to ask him to finance the other 80. Do it over 30 years, right? And let's go ahead and give him a 5% interest rate. You know, it's going to be hard to get the guy to be like, yo, 3% over 30 years is so low, right? Let's offer him 5 And then this is going to put everything out there for you so you can see it all. And we could pr we'll present this chart with this whole amortization schedule to the guy, right? He could see every single payment. You see how much goes towards interest, how much goes towards principal. Are you a lender? If so... Holton Wise is looking to partner with you. If you're licensed in all 50 states, go to HoltonWise.com. Click the digital media tab to advertise on Holton Wise TV today. And if you guys notice, right, at the beginning, right, at the beginning of the loan, most of the money goes towards your interest, very little goes to principal, and that swings down, right? So when you're at the end, the majority of your money, right? So like your first payment, freaking... $96, only about a fourth, less than a fourth of the 429 is going to go towards your principal, right? But when you get down to the end, end of your loan, look at the difference, right? 478 or 427.68 all goes towards your principal, only $1.78 in interest, right? Amortized loans, you know, the interest that's backed in the beginning, right? That's why when you guys trade properties and you do financing, you're typically not going to uh, make much money if you're financing properties and you're selling them every few years, right? Right once you get to that seven-year mark, that's when you really start doing some principal pay down. That's just a little long-term tip for you guys there. All right, so 429, okay? 429, that's your monthly payment, right? But I want you to really focus on this, $154,604.63. You put down ten grand. And then you make him $360,429 payments. You're going to make him a total of $154,604.63 over that 30-year period plus your ten grand down, right? So that's $164,604, right? So when we present this offer to the seller, we got to just package it the right way. Hey, man, you want $130 for this. I'll give you $164,604, but... It's over 30 years. I'll put down 10 up front. I want you to finance the other 80 at 5%. That's how I'll give you that money. That creates a win-win. He's got a $90,000 property, but he's going to end up getting $164,000 out of it. You 
get a hell of a cash on cash return and can get a loan that doesn't go towards your credit, doesn't count on your credit. You could still use those 10 residential mortgages and you don't even have to put down 25%, right? 90K, it's a 7.7 .7 cap. You're only putting down 10 grand after you pay the 429. This results in a 17.5% cash on cash return, right? So you guys both win, right? You're getting into a property for a lot less than you should and you're still cash flowing. This dude is getting 164 G's for his $90,000 investment. Win, win. And the best part is, Holton Wise, we can get the mortgages drafted and all that jazz, right? A lot of people think that uh, actually drafting these seller finance docs is like super scary and crazy. It's really not, right? It's a pretty simple process, right? For the seller, right? He's got his property. He's going to transfer the deed over to you, okay? You're going to put down your 10K, and then he's going to hold a mortgage. What we're going to do is we're going to have an attorney draft the mortgage. Typically, we have the seller's attorney do so. Then we give it to you. We have you uh, send that to your attorney and make sure you're okay with everything. So the seller will now hold the mortgage. He will now be the bank. He will foreclose on you if you do not make your $429 monthly payments. That's pretty simple. Uh, all very easy, right? So after we get the mortgage drafted, what we do is we just give that to the title company and they record everything uh, with the county. It's it's on record, and if you don't make your payments, he's coming at you just the same way Wells Fargo would come at you if you finance the property that way, right? All the seller is doing in a seller finance deal is he's becoming the bank, right? So instead of paying your $429 to a Wells Fargo, you're paying it to this guy, right? And he's protected. It's been recorded, and he could come after you, right? This is how you create a win-win. you got to give the seller what they want guys there's not a lot of seller finance deals on the market right but just so you know i do have access to all of them for you but you got to to move on them because there's so few of them guys when they pop up you want to start negotiating with the sellers immediately so if you want to get access to those deals for cheap go to property search tab on holtonwise.com property search the for sale tab we got links to our shows the investment properties for sale show the mls show and then of course what I'm talking about, the MLS access, and you can get access to all the seller finance deals in the Cleveland market. These are all the seller finance deals listed by every agent in the MLS that I am a part of, right? There's over 5,000 agents in the MLS. The MLS, guys, that's the place where realtors list their properties and realtors work together to sell you properties. Like if you're looking on Zillow or Realtor.com, what those are is those are tech websites that aggregate data from the MLS. So the, the original data is entered by realtors here on the MLS. And then a few days or weeks later, that info, you know, it, it, it aggregates down and gets sent to websites like Zillow or Realtor or Trulia. The problem with websites like Zillow or Realtor or Trulia is they're outdated, right? A lot of people think Realtor.com is owned by the National Association of Realtors and, and it must be the actual MLS. Not true. It's own, I think it's owned by like Move.com, right? Total third-party company, right? Just obviously they picked a really clever domain, okay? Uh, but that data, it's old. It's outdated. So a lot of times when seller financing pops on the market, there's so few seller finance deals available that people are already making offers, negotiating with these people, and those deals might get, you know, scooped up. And plus, you don't actually have the opportunity to, like, search it via seller financing on those websites, to my knowledge. So what you guys want to do, you want to get the information from the horse's mouth. You want to get it immediately. And I've categorized it into three ways for you, all coming directly from my MLS. You got your seller finance single families, your seller finance multifamilies, and then down here, you got your seller finance commercial buildings. In my experience, is buying a couple million dollars worth of seller finance deals over the years. Uh, your apartment building sellers, they are more open to do seller financing. You're probably going to see the highest level of frequency of seller finance deals in the bigger space. Why? Because the financing gets so much trickier when you get into those bigger buildings, right? It's not as simple as all that 30-year, 25% down stuff that gets sold to Fannie and Freddie, right? Things become a lot more different, and people are a lot more sophisticated. The buyer pool is more sophisticated. There's a lot more money at play, and people really tend to get creative to get deals done when you're up into that space. So my recommendation to you guys, if you're trying to do seller finance deals, is get yourself the direct access 
analyze those deals, do your due diligence, and if you see one you like, you can negotiate directly with that seller, or if you want, you can do exactly what Jay did and order yourself an episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show, and I will analyze the property for you. I will give you my complete unbiased opinion, and then I will represent you as your agent. Guys, if you want to do that, just send an email to sales at holtonweiss.com, include your phone number. My team will call you. We'll talk to you, make sure everything's uh, going to be a good fit, will be a good fit for you, you'll be a good fit for us and we can move forward or if you have uh, questions or want more information but you like to do it all online you click the show notes below more information is available there and Jay let me know if you'd like to make an offer on this property uh, using the strategy I outlined for you in this video and it's of course very similar to the strategy I outlined for you in the previous video what I'm going to do now Jay is film your third video of the day Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.